So I want to bring a lot more light into powerlifting and how intense this really is. Oh, but it's a lot more than what fucking John Hack is doing. Ayo, hey, good morning, YouTube! Welcome back to another video. As you can see, we are back, Canada. Um, we are back here for three weeks and then we are headed off to Miami. So it kind of feels good to get back on a schedule. <clears throat> Where the fuck is this pack? Oh, here it is. Kind of feels good to be back in the hometown court for the last three weeks of prep. I mean, it just makes things a little bit easier because I have my home gym, I have all my friends here, so not that I didn't like prepping in Texas, but it honestly was getting really hard trying to ask someone random for a spot every single time. But because I've been traveling so much, I haven't really made any like real friends there, so I wasn't comfortable like going up to random people and asking them to, to spot me, but your boy cannot be stopped right now. He can't be stopped. Let I know I haven't really posted in a bit and that was because I've been losing my fucking mind But in like a good and bad way. I benched the house out the other day I did 465 pounds for a conservative single. That's 85% of my max Bam! Flew up fucking where's the knife take this knife and then put it through some hot butter And that's how fucking easy that lift was it was a joke and we have just started the motherfucking Halo testing. This is this is this ain't even open. This ain't. Ooh hoo hoo! Ooh hoo hoo! Y'all better watch out! Y'all better watch out! I know that you guys have some problems getting that stuff. If you DM me on Instagram, um, United States or Canada, I can probably swing you a source for the same stuff that I've been using in both places. I mean, I am not gonna risk losing a citizenship over it, but I don't see why I can't point people in the right direction. Officially back working for myself, so I'm packing up all the Noble Sups and Acne Attack skincare orders. I got it! We have a big deadlift day today. We're doing 675 pounds. Last deadlift day, I did 685 pounds. I was supposed to do five sets of two, but I ripped my hand open. I'll just play that clip right now. Let's go! Up, 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 up! So while my eggs are cooking, I just kind of want to go over the exact cycle now that we are three weeks out from the weight cut or four weeks out, whatever. So we are still on testosterone and enthate, 500 milligrams. We are in we are on testosterone propanate, 150 milligrams. Now, in the next week or two, I'm going to be tapering down the enenthate and bringing up the propanate. It is time to start making that weight cut. I have dropped the trend enenthate because I was not liking how it made me feel. So I've upped the trend acetate to 500 milligrams a week. It's higher than I've ever done, and it is a fast ester, so I'll be excited to see what comes of that, but we actually just started that today. We take two pills of Helios a day. Helios is sold on noblesubs.net, same with the GW. And again, these are just to help me make weight. And Helios is amazing for curbing appetite. We are taking 25 milligrams of Proviron. We actually just added this in. It's again, helping me a little stay full, a little bit stronger. Um, and it also helps with my skin because I am in quite a toxic cycle right now. We are gonna start this at 20 to 30 milligrams a day, tapering up to about 80 milligrams before the week of the meat at 80 milligrams a day. <laughs> Woo, let's get it! We actually added in Clen because I do an hour of morning cardio every morning because I still have like 25 pounds to lose to make 198. We added in 25 milligrams of Winstrol because I have 25 fucking pounds to lose. These are also sold on Noble Subs. Net Cialis. Um, I break these pills in half. I take five milligrams of Cialis every single day for my blood pressure. And like, I don't know, I don't know if I still have the video. I'll put it up here. I took my blood pressure like two weeks ago. It was perfect or near perfect. Um, um, those are listed under dick pills. Because my trend dose is so high right now, I take 0 0.5 milligrams of Kaber every three or four days whenever I can remember it. And then I take one milligram of finasteride every day because currently guys, like I have perfect hair. Here's my hairline. It has not receded like at all. So 
I'm pretty fucking happy about that and I want to keep it that way. That's the cycle, really. I mean, it's nothing crazy compared to what these other guys are doing, but it's a lot more than what fucking John Hack is doing because John Hack is running a TRT dose with 40 milligrams of Anivar and breaking world records. Remember that. What's that viral TikTok going around right now? Just remember, kids, when you think the government wouldn't do that, just remember. They would. You're competing in an untested event against the best people in the world. That I have a PDF file that my friend sent me from a well-known coach saying that there is more than half of people running over a gram of test. I personally know five people that have break all-time world records and the, le the least amount of tests they ever ran was 750 milligrams. You're trying to tell everyone that you can do a TRT dose and you're that good. I mean, I do think you're that good. I do think you are that good. But I will eventually beat you, and then we will see what happens. I'm four years younger than you, and I've been hurt for four years. If I didn't get hurt, I would have already beat you by now. Sugar-free monster, it's time to load up the laptop. I have actually been getting on two massive grinds lately. I have been doing this. Basically, it's absolutely nothing when your mental state is going to shit. Now, I don't believe in mental health. I don't believe in anxiety or depression. I want to honestly go back to all my old YouTube videos and take those down because I do not want people watching those videos anymore and being like, yeah, I'm depressed. I want to be sad. I want, no guys, like there's a time and a place for everything. You need to be sad to experience happiness. You need to be depressed to experience gratitude. You need the yin and the yang. The ball goes up. It has to come down. So yes, it's okay to be depressed. You just can't get lost in that cycle of always being depressed. I think being depressed is fucking amazing. You get more work done, you're more self-aware, your relationships strengthen, and it forces you to work on yourself. You go into a therapist that's gonna be like, oh yeah, you're depressed, take these pills, and your feelings matter. No, they don't. Your feelings don't matter. What you do about your feelings matter. And that's what I'm trying to get across now, because ever since I realized this, and that I'm in charge of here, my life has drastically improved. I believe I just ranted for like 30 minutes. I have so much work to do. I need to slam all these pills and I'll see you guys for the pre-workout meal. Guys, we have reduced the price on all acne attack skincare. Let's go! So instead of doing a one pack, a three pack, and a six pack, we are now doing a one pack, a four pack, and an eight pack. And every single price of soap, even the one pack, is reduced in price now. With the recession and with people's wages being cut and people losing their jobs, I don't want your skin to suffer. I want to be able to sell the soap at a better price point so more people can afford it and I can get it into the hands of way more fucking people because it honestly has changed my life, it's changed my athlete's life, it's changed testimonials lives. I want you to try this because you will not go back. We are cooking up some shrimp. We got some jasmine motherfucking rice in there and Gorilla has just sent me the new flavor. Now I've tried a little sample package of this grape cotton candy so we're probably gonna take two scoops of that we obviously got the fucking k-boost kratom we're gonna take two more pills of halo and we are absolutely getting hyped the fuck up right now let's go george leaving let's go yeah ah! like that that is old school power lifting all these fucking pussies now like, I see all these guys lift, and it honestly makes me fucking go to sleep. You guys are fucking boring. You lift like fucking pussies. Is I was alone in Texas, and usually I have someone to, like, slap my back in Ottawa or, like, hype me up. I didn't have anyone to hype me up. I was losing my fucking mind in the gym. I had the biggest squat day to date. I literally hit my head so hard against the bar that my face started fucking bleeding, and then I literally repeatedly slammed myself in the face which gave me a black eye, and then the pressure from the actual squat popped this blood vessel in my fucking eye. And I fucking killed it. 700 for reps. We literally have 780 pounds for two coming up in the next couple weeks. And we're absolutely gonna kill it. So, now we don't have our heaviest day today, but we definitely have the most volume for the heaviest weight. And we really gotta kill it. So I think we have 675 pounds for like three sets of three with chains, so like 750 at the top. Yeah, with that said, enough ranting. I'll see you in the gym.
that is three sets of two reps with 675 plus 60 pounds of chain. So 735 for three sets of two. The last set was a fucking grinder because even with the straps, I keep tearing my fucking hands open. So we're gonna wrap up this workout. I gotta go pick up my parents from the airport, but it's really loud in here. I'm gonna give you guys some recaps. I honestly wanna touch on what it takes to compete at this level because I don't feel it's talked about enough. And back in the day, they used to talk about this. Eric Lillibridge, George Lehman, Pete Rubish would all touch on what it takes um, to be one of the top powerlifters. And now a lot of people don't have a personality. They're not well-spoken. They can't articulate what they're thinking well. So I wanna bring a lot more light into powerlifting and how intense this really is for the people that are competing for the top spot in the world. Now, obviously there's two different ways for everything. You can go into this and just wanna have fun and be the best version of you or you can try to break all time world records and be ranked one of the best power lifters and strongest people have ever set foot on planet earth. Now I've made my decision that I wanna be the strongest person that's ever sat weighed in at 198 and I know based off of the numbers that we're hitting right now, in the next one to two years, there's no if, ands, or buts in my mind that that won't happen. I get a lot of questions on, well how are you so strong? The simple answer is I want it more than you do. I'm willing to take more drugs. I'm willing to get more of a fucked up mental state. I'm willing to put more effort into recovery, into every aspect of what it takes to be the best. When I go into that gym, I don't give a fuck about how you're doing. I don't give a fuck about how your weekend was. I don't give a fuck about your peasant life problems. When I go into squat, bench, and deadlift, I'm going in to unleash 25 years of my deepest, darkest demons that I hold in because I'm a fucking man and that's what men do on that bar. Before every fucking heavy lift, I try to think of the most fucked up things that have happened to me in the past, as well as things that have never even happened. I will visualize my mom getting stuck under a semi truck. And if I don't lift that off my mom, my mother and father and entire bloodline will fucking die. And if I fail that, and if I cannot do that for my family, I've convinced it in my head that I will go home and take a knife and slit my throat and end my life because I'm that much of a fucking failure that I could not save my family. Those are the things that are going through my mind when I'm squatting 800 pounds, when I'm benching into the fives, when I'm deadlifting 800. You always hear of these stories of mothers being able to lift cars off children because their adrenaline is so high. And in that moment, I have fully geared and trained myself to unleash more adrenaline than the next person in order to have feats of strength that are not comparable to another person. I purely get stronger every single week because I try harder every single week. I get in a more fucked up or better mental state for powerlifting every week in order to peak for this competition. Now, in, now with proper powerlifting training that myself or my coach Jay Nira has me doing, plus a proper or fucked up mental state that I am able to get myself in is the reason that I will be totaling 21, 2200 at 198 and rivaling some of the best athletes that have ever stepped foot on the planet from not even competing or training for the last four years for this. Now, I just wanted to kind of open that up and have I taken the max amount of drugs that people are taking? No. Like I said, I have a PDF file. I'll literally put a small screenshot of it right here. These athletes are taking two times the amount I'm taking and are not even close to what I'm doing. And John Hack, if you're watching this, I hope that you bring your best for the next two years. And I hope that you're honestly telling the truth about your cycle. Because when I beat your ass, I wanna see, it's like, okay, then if you can come back even stronger, then maybe you were telling the truth. Because if you increase the drugs, get even stronger, that'll make sense. But I'm all here for the game, and that's the only thing I'm coming to do, is fucking win. And I'll do anything it takes to get there. And I know you guys, oh, it's so stupid, you'll be dead by 35. If I have 10 more years on this earth, 
and I'm able to continue to scale my businesses, which we will most likely gross a million dollars in sales this year from changing people's lives in skincare, as well as the Sarman Peptide Company, as well as the other two companies I'm involved in, plus be ranked first all time ever in the world at 198, ever stepping foot on this planet, the strongest person, then you tell me who's gonna live a more fulfilled life me for the next 10 years or you working a job that you fucking hate because you are ever too scared to push it to the limits of doing what you actually fucking love. Now I know that I'm going to live more than 10 years and I'm just using this as an extreme example because I do my blood work, I do check things and I actually come off all steroids for six months a year. But I just want to put that in a perspective to wake some of you fuckers up and say, who's actually living a more fulfilled life? And I know that that's a subjective question, but I just want that to sit with you. So thank you guys so much for watching another video. I'm stoked because we're closing in on this meet and we have some of the biggest lifts coming up in the next two weeks and it's time to fuck shit up. So let's kill it. We're back in the hometown, no excuses.